just some general guidelines if we need to identify a horse, the things that you want to look for. Um, horses come in pretty unique markings, um, and that can be across their body as well as facial hoof markings, etc. So honestly, I would highly recommend pictures, photographs are going to be really key, um, and to pay attention to those key areas on the horse. And so obviously this horse, and unfortunately this is not actually real, for the longest time I thought this was a real horse that said horse, but apparently that's a photoshopped horse. Um, so make sure you take pictures. That would have been fantastic if you had a horse that said horse. So basic body colors, we don't expect you guys to get it right. Um, in horse vernacular, a lot of times the same color will be called a different term by different people. So even my little red horse over there in the corner, that sorrel horse, he's a sorrel horse if he's a quarter horse, but if he's an Arabian, he's a chestnut. And that's not something the average person really needs to know. Um, so if you can get kind of, it's a reddish brown horse and get some pictures of it, that's probably the key thing again. But they can come in quite a bit of variety of colors. Um, some of the dilute colors or these type of body colors, at least on animal recovery side or theft purposes, sometimes these guys are almost a little bit more attractive. We have a little bit more value on some of the rarer colors. So that might be a thing that you might see. Um, so just kind of a list of different colors again. There's a lot of differences in terminology between them, whether they're stripes or lines or things like that. Uh, but realize this is just a reference for you guys as far as what to maybe um, write down. Some other things that you might want to zero in on and take pictures or do descriptions on. The horse there, those are the hocks of the hind legs of the horse. You can see there's sort of some stripes on those. Those are a characteristic for a specific type of horse. So that would be something to take pictures of, okay? That's part of that description. That horse is a zebra dun in my world. Um, so that's what he would be called. And the horse there on the top to the right, you can see he's got a dorsal, that's a dorsal stripe. That's another identifying characteristic. So you might want to consider, you know, sort of that top view as well. So really look at all of those things if you're taking pictures to identify a horse. And gray horses will come in all sorts of different variations in coat color pattern. Again, that's a great way to provide some extra documentation <laughs> of what that horse uh, looks like. Again, I don't expect you guys to know all of the terminology. There's lots of charts out there. The best thing I would do is take pictures, okay? So take pictures, do close-ups of facial markings. Realize that some facial markings actually go under the jaw of the horse as well. So only if it's safe. So if it's a very, very safe horse, you'll see uh, later on. All the horses we're going to use today are safe horses, so let me put that caveat in. Uh, but pictures underneath the jaw of the horse may also be important to help identify a horse. Um, and then horses have a lot of unique leg markings as well. So again, taking pictures of different views of those legs will help identify that horse. Um, it can be harder when we're talking about maybe after tornadoes or we've had massive flooding that they're dirty, okay? So that may cover up a lot of identifying characteristics. So bear that in mind that you may just be covering up some of those key features of that horse if it's really, really dirty. Um, some other things to help identify them. So um, in horse world, anything that's a female, we'll call a mare once they're a little bit older. Geldings are going to be your castrated males, and then stallions are intact males, okay? So horses are maybe not as easy to tell that it's an intact male as cattle. So when we look at the bulls later on, you can pretty much tell a bull uh, pretty easily. Horses, it's not as easy, um, and hopefully I'm not offending anybody here, their testicles are held much higher to their body than a bull, okay? Especially if it's cold or they're stressed, they tend to carry those higher to the body, so you may not be able to visibly see that. And again, their, their characteristics are a little bit more subtle when they're an intact male. So why is that important? They do act a little bit differently than a castrated horse, um, and they don't intermingle well, okay? So if you accidentally are putting stallions in with other stallions or mares, you can expect a little bit more excitement in your life um, than if we separated those out. So be sure to check safely. <coughs> 
On identification, breed is going to actually be a little bit tricky. So those two pictures that I have there, those are both registered quarter horses, but those are pretty different looking animals, okay? So we always say a horse has to be a well-bred version of that horse to fit really with that breed characteristic. So realize you may not always actually be able to recognize what they are. So within our quarter horses, they can look like thoroughbreds or this is a halter horse to little tiny horses all over the place. So don't worry about that a whole lot. Um, teeth can be used to age a horse, but you need to have a, a little bit of horse handling skill um, to look at their teeth because not all horses are going to want you to handle their muzzle. So I would put that as probably one of my last things that I'm going to use to identify or provide characterization of that horse. And then some other areas on horses that are pretty key, look for any scarring on their legs. So horses, unfortunately, have sometimes a habit of getting themselves in trouble. Um, so <laughs> fences, all those things, uh, we do see a lot of scarring on horse legs. So look down around the lower legs and the hocks. Those are pretty key areas that horses may have some scars that can also provide some identification. The other kind of cool thing about horses, if you look at their faces, and then later on when we're out with the live horses, we'll do this, they all have kind of unique locations of those whorls. So some horses will have high whorls, middle whorls, lower whorls, double whorls. It's all kind of fun things about what that means for the horse's behavior. But for identification purposes, taking a picture of where that whorl occurs can also help uh, identify that horse. And these are things we encourage owners to do as well. If you have a horse and you know tornadoes are coming, we want you to have photographic evidence that's pretty specific about your, about your horse. So some other fun things about the horse industry. A lot of times people want to use their papers, their registration papers, to identify ownership. However, um, that may not be that helpful for you because a lot of registration papers um, don't have pictures of the horse at all, it would just have a description. Um, and honestly, we change ownership of horses quite a bit. Um, so that's part of the horse industry. We sell horses quite commonly. Um, and every time we do that, if we want that horse in our name, you have to pay money. And if it's not in your best interest or you don't intend to show the horse, not everybody ever transfers papers. So the paper may go with the horse, but it may be a few owners back. Okay? So that is the reality of our industry. It doesn't mean that that person stole that horse. It just meant I didn't want to pay my 30 bucks. Okay? So <laughs> it's not a definitive. So realize that there may be some things on there that aren't uh, great. And some of the fun things is horses can change color over their lifetime. Not like completely, right? So you don't get a red horse and then he turns black and then back to you know, yellow or anything like that. But gray horses will get whiter over time and Appaloosas will do the same thing to you too. They can be a little tricksy. So some of the other paperwork you may see with horses, uh, horses have to have um, something that are called their Coggins test. So this just proves that they don't have a disease that has no uh, vaccine or cure. But most Coggins papers now do have photographs of horses, but a lot of them um, that are still out there, it's just what the vet drew. Um, and if you have a horse that has a lot of markings, you kind of just go, meh, it's good enough. Um, so realize that those drawn Coggins papers may not always really match that horse, but it still may be legal, okay? So just realize they're not always a really, really accurate description. Here's pictures of some horses on um, pedigree. So this individual took, got their horse registered when he was a foal, so you have its full picture. Well, grown horses look quite a bit different than baby horses. Um, and then, you know, this is just a dark horse. <laughs> it's pretty hard to see a lot of the characteristics of that horse. Here's another version, no pictures at all. So that's going to be even harder. You just have, it's a Palomino mare. Well, and, and we don't have a lot of people that have theft recovery, I think, in your background here, but that's a real thing in the horse industry too, is swapping papers for a horse that may not be the actual horse. So there's sometimes some fraudulent things that happen. Um, so realize that they may not actually always uh, match up. 
So there are permanent ways to identify horses, but they're probably not as common as you think. Um, tattooing is really only done for horses that have raced on a track. Um, so if you flip up the upper lip of a horse, and we'll show you pictures, but if he's got a tattoo, it means he was on the track. Um, other horses, even thoroughbreds, if they never went through that process, may not have lip tattoos. Um, brands are something that you may see with our stock breeds. So some breeders will brand horses to kind of demonstrate their line of their horse, but that's not really common. Um, and again, you're going to see it more in the Western horse disciplines and for people that really want you to know that's my lineage or my type of horse that I raise. Um, DNA might help you out, but only on registered horses. So the only horses that are going to have DNA records on them are horses that are registered through breed associations and have been sired through artificial insemination. So if they were born via um, the horses to were together, <laughs> so they will not have DNA on those horses. So some, that's something we do for a pair of parentage verification for artificial insemination. Um, and then the other thing to be aware of, and certainly the large animal first responders have held a couple clinics on this, it is a movement to get horses chipped. So just like your dog would have a microchip, uh, having horses chipped will help with that recovery process. So we encourage owners to get their horses chipped. Uh, but some other um, types of horses will also be chipped as well. Um, so we'll talk about that. So tattoos, again, are on racehorses. Um, so this is a horse with a fresh tattoo, which is pretty easy to read. But those tattoos fade over time and are all you're honestly going to be able to tell is it was on a track at some point in time. You're not going to be able to read those digits at all, but it might give you a little bit of background. Um, and again, if they've if they could still be that breed, but if they kind of flunked out of being a racehorse early, they won't have lip tattoos. So you can have lots of thoroughbreds that don't have a lip tattoo on them, just the ones that were on the track. Um, branding, like I said, uh, you may see the two types you're going to see are either a hot iron or freeze brand. Hot iron, and this will be kind of the same for cattle as well. Hot iron, you won't have any hair left, so it'll just be the scar. Um, and a freeze brand, the white hair will fill in. So um, these are just all the locations on horses that you will see brands, okay? So they will put brands on essentially the stifle of the horse or the hip, um, the shoulder sometimes, but by far the most common one where that horse has that X, that's where most people will brand a horse. Um, so is on that, that stifle or the thigh area of the horse. Um, ones that are branded on the neck um, are, uh, very different, so um, a little bit different types of horses that are going to be branded on the neck. So this is important around here. We do have a fair number of these guys that uh, are in the area, long range holding facilities, etc. So if you see brands on the left side of the neck that look like this, that's a Mustang, okay? Um, and that may mean that it is a little wilder or it may not. So. <laughs> So some of them have been ridden and adopted and are just like normal riding horses, but some of them, if they are only the type that are in long-term holding facility, they've, they have not had handling, and you want to consider them a kind of a wild animal. Okay, so uh, very, very, very different backgrounds in those horses. So just kind of a heads up if you see it on the left side of the neck. There are other breed associations that brand on the other side, but those are typically warm bloods. Um, and we don't see as many of those um, in Oklahoma, to be honest. Uh, we have a little bit more of a stock horse population. Um, and then, um, again, the microchips. Make sure if you have access to a scanner, it's always something to think about for lost animals. We're trying to get that a little bit more common, that horses will have that. It will always be in the upper part of the neck there that's in the nuchal ligament, if you like technicalities. Uh, but again, up on that band of tissue at the top side of their neck, you can use a scanner on that. And there are some ho other types of horses that will have scanners. Um, so Jockey Club is moving to having horses uh, chipped. So that's to help with a lot of the fraudulent activities, um, as well as some of our uh, quarter horses. So that if I have a solid bay horse, 
I need to show the actual solid bay horse I'm saying it is and not the convenient other one. Um, so that's why we're moving into having more horses chipped. So I would consider that as something to have available to use to scan these guys. Um, so again, this is really more of the, th the theft and fraudulent activity prevention on the horse side. Okay. Not to my awareness. Yeah. So if like a program bought a dog chip reader, it could also read a horse chip. It's the same thing. The horse might not be updated with current information, but at least it will bing, 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 this horse is chipped and we can get a tracker. Yeah, because it's only if there's a limited number of companies that make those devices. Right.